I'm Tim Holmes. I'm an artist and a sculptor in Helena. I've been here many, many years. And this is my friend Bob Manis, who is a psychologist, clinical psychologist, uh, and uh, a resident of uh, Frederick, Maryland on the East Coast. The two of us are part of a team of six organizers and nine presenters who are putting together a, what we call a confluence at my beautiful historic studio in Helena, June 10th to the 13th. And this is a kind of a historic gathering because we feel like we've gone through these incredible crises. We've got a very unique moment in history when people all around the world are dealing with exactly the same problem. We have the, the COVID crisis, of course, and climate change, the demise of democracy. We are dealing with all these things all at once. And it feels like we don't really have that much uh, capacity to change or to alter our future. And here it seems like civilization is just headed to the edge of the cliff. And as remarkable as we are as a, as a species, we are somehow unable to get ourselves out of this situation. So, you know, with, with all of our incredible creativity and, and wisdom and uh, knowledge, we are headed to some kind of catastrophe. And it seems like our greater institutions aren't able to rescue us from that. So we're thinking, how do we as individuals respond to this situation? So we decided we have to get together and start talking about this. So we've got nine individuals from four countries who are uh, presenting at this conference. And the idea is to try to foster individual creativity because you know institutions don't have a soul. It's only an individual that has a soul and is able to come up with a creative idea. Institutions are really good at helping us to materialize those ideas. But we have to come up with the ideas first. How are we going to survive climate change? How are we going to survive the other crises that we face? I think that it's going to have to come from a small group of individuals. And that's what we're trying to put together here is we've got seats for about 40 people during these three days to come together and not only talk about these ideas, but to create a space for creative enterprise. So we're, we are presenting workshops that have to do with fostering individual creativity, finding out what it is that wants to come out of us. So the central question of this, this whole confluence is, what is it within you that wants to be born? And I, I, it strikes me that that's a very similar question to what religion asks of us, really, which is about how do you, how do you relate to the universe and what is your role in that? What is your role in, in unfolding what is inside of you to make the world a better place? And I, um, we've, we've joined together in the spirit of creativity that uh, all the presenters have engaged in a creative enterprise of their own. So part of the uh, basis for the conference is a focus on experiential creativity as, as a way to respond to these, these global questions that <clears throat> seem at times to be beyond the realm or the ability of institutions to address to the satisfaction of the people of the earth. And it's our modest offering that perhaps we can generate a way of looking at things that involve creative solutions that haven't been institutionalized or expressed in the standard ways from before. So the confluence is called The Creator's Art, a confluence of art, psychology, and renewal. And it seems to us, in talking about this idea, and the, the genesis of this whole thing is, it is the individual that provides the kind of creative wisdom that we need to move forward into a new kind of, of living. And one of the things I've worried about is, is we go through the COVID crisis and afterwards the first thing we want to do is just get back to normal. You know, I just want to keep doing the stuff I used to do. And I think as long as the mud is all stirred up from, from all these crises, that is the time to make systemic change. You know, well, things are still a little bit unsettled. And even today it feels like that mud is starting to settle and as soon as it gets back to where it was before it's so hard to change so this is the time we want to seize this moment and be able to
to move forward into a new kind of civilization that is more responsive to the times and to the human being. To a, to a world <clears throat> hopefully energized by creativity. And um, that's the thrust of it. How do we understand ourselves psychologically? How do we respond creatively? And what is it that we can collectively do in a way to make fundamental changes or to enhance or create a dialogue about fundamental change that will result in, in the kinds of change that are congruent with how we live collectively? So we have six American presenters. Bob and I are two of them. We have uh, a 90-year-old female artist who's a remarkable woman from California named uh, Colleen Kiber, who's, who's going to come and do this really great workshop on finding images that resonate and making a collage out of these images and then being able to, uh, uh, to study the images that we pick up and figure out what it is that that reveals about what, what we care about and what is emerging in our future. And frequently people are afraid of this kind of expression because it's, it's, it's usually judged and my profession is one of the worst at judging what's within. <clears throat> but we're approaching this not as a function of judgment, but as a function of understanding. And in that understanding and the freedom for creation to emerge enhances the quality of relationships both within self and between others. And to me, that's a very exciting proposition, as long as we keep the judgment paradigm out of the interpretive process. Yeah, the, the creative impulse really can survive in the same environment as judgment. You have to be able to absolutely Tim. to get out of the. Uh, you have to be able to to transcend the boundaries that we naturally put up to try to to. Uh, access as much new ideas and new approaches, new perspectives that, that will allow us to move forward when it comes to addressing current problems. Uh, I think about the, the, the momentum that brought us into the, into the terrible mess of climate change that we got ourselves into. You know, as, our, as intelligent and as, as brilliant as we human beings are, it just seems like we have not figured out how to how to keep from altering the environment so much that we're going to wipe out our own species. So we need some kind of new ideas to move forward. And it seems to me that the, it's the, the individual access to creative thinking that is going to, is going to be uh, able to, to transcend these current problems. So another one of the uh, presenters is Dr. John Jackson also of California. He's a psychologist and a psychiatrist, teacher, psychiatrist and yeah. a teacher. And I think of him as a, as a scholar of the Old Testament because he's been teaching classes on the Old Testament and Rilke and literature. He's a remarkable guy. Um, he's he's a, also a really fun human being. All these people are really great we've, human beings. <laughs> we've had an opportunity to spend some time together in preparation for how we're going to do it and what we're going to do. So we've, we've come to know each other somewhat, some better than others, but it's been a wonderful experience for me getting to know the other members of the confluence and to find the remarkable similarities that we have in common when previously we didn't know each other. But the, the sense of commonality and purpose is the driving force for all of us, I think, as well as the enjoyment of the participation with each other and the anticipation of the conference where we'll be able to interact with even more people and maybe generate a little momentum to move out beyond the confines of Helena, Montana into the world <clears throat> where maybe we can be a, a modest spark um, in, a, in an initiatory journey that spreads and develops and enhances for all of us collectively. And that's very exciting to me. Yeah, it's been important to all of us to try to include as many different perspectives as, as we can. And, and so one thing that's important to us is bringing in the voices of people that we usually don't hear from. So we've tried to bring in 
three presenters from outside the Western Hemisphere. Uh, and as it, it looks to now that two of them aren't going to be able to get their visas. One is, is Lana Sh Sh Shaheen, mm -hmm. who is an artist from Palestine. And she is actually, we've got some of her artwork here that's going to be part of an opening exhibition called the Transformational Image, which will be here at, at the Tim Holmes studio. And that, that exhibit includes four artists, uh, myself, uh, Lana, Colleen Kaber, and then another presenter, Sherry Loveler, who is a calligrapher and an amazing artist, painter. Uh, and those, poet. And poet, yes. And she's, she's going to be presenting workshops on, on painting and poetry. Um, but these, these three people from outside the country uh, are, are going to come in by Zoom and be able to speak to us. Lana's going to give a gallery talk about some of her artwork. And she's got a remarkable story. She was, I don't quite know the whole story, but she had to, at one point, smuggle a bunch of paintings tied around her body, you know, going through the, the border check. Um, and that's the kind of thing, we don't see that kind of courage. As an artist, you know, that just fills me with awe that a person would have the courage to do that kind of thing. And another presenter is uh, uh, Kushbu uh, Kantharia, who's in Bangalore, India. And she's kind of a, a one-person institution in Bangalore addressing suicide. Um, apparently, when the, when the police run into somebody who's in a suicidal state, they call up her. <laughs> and she, she's the person that responds. She's got an amazing story herself that hopefully she'll be able to share with us during this confluence. And then there's another person who is... Uh, a refugee from Ethiopia. She came to Helena to study at the college here in the, in the nursing program. And she arrived last summer. And since she arrived, her part of Ethiopia dissolved into civil war. And it's a really, a really heartrending story because uh, up until about three weeks ago, she didn't know if her family was still alive. And man, that, I don't know how you could survive that, but, uh, but anyway, she's doing well. She is living in Helena, and she's going to be part of this conference, and she's going to be able to tell her story. So it's really important to me to have these stories of people who, uh, who have very, very different lives than ourselves, being able to talk about some of these same issues. And how do, we, how do we make a conversation with people who are very different from ourselves and be able to find common ground with, with different perspectives? And then there's Skip Conover, who <clears throat> has been a, um, a probably the, the the major impetus for this confluence. I think it was essentially originally his vision, and he's he lives on the east coast in Annapolis, and um, not too far from Frederick. And uh, um, he, I see him kind of as the originator, the individual with the vision, initially that provided the, the uh, effort <clears throat> to bring us together and help us kind of develop our vision for ourselves and the world. <clears throat> and I think, um, I think he will be presenting on the tarot, as I recall, and that will be very interesting too. Again, we don't have a, a kind of ritualized or specific agenda as much as we're trying to be creative and flexible and open and allow that kind of energy and spirit to pervade throughout the time together and and the creativity that comes from that spirit. So Skip is a retired Marine and a, an entrepreneur. He's run big, huge companies in, in the Pacific, you know, Japan, Malaysia, Malaysia, India, yeah, Saudi Arabia, and uh, man, he's full of energy, and he's got a, a YouTube following of seventeen thousand subscribers uh, of a of a Carl Jung reading and study group. Um, Carl Jung is a the founding psychologist that that uh, that I think inspires all of us. He certainly inspires my artwork, and. 
gives us, I think of, I think of Jung as being the guy who opens the hood of the human spirit and looks at how we operate underneath and is able to describe what it is that a human being needs. Uh, and to me, that's, that's been just really profound. And here I am, I come from a, a long line of, of Christian ministers. My, my brother's a sixth generation Methodist minister in our family. And so I'm very deeply religious as, a, as an individual, but I'm also very much interested in how the, how the psych, psychological um, structure of, of the human spirit is enlivened by understanding, by, by being able to make conscious the unconscious uh, impulses that we live with every day. So the kind of thing that you deal with on a daily basis, I deal with peripherally as I'm making art, uh, trying to uncover the secrets of what is the human condition about. And because all of us come from different angles, but we all participate in these, this idea that, that the, uh, the psychological uh, revelation of each person is where the creative energy and the, the individual wisdom comes from. We can work together to, to, uh, to bring these ideas into, into some kind of fruition. I think of, of this confluence as being creating a space for that thing to happen. So even though the program is full, we've got, we've got presentations and workshops. And, and, and a play. And a play, we'll get to that. Um, even though there's all this, this kind of structured program activity. activity, it seems to me that, that the, what's going to come out of this is what we come up with in these little dialogues. We're going to have meals together and talk and bring in people from the community and have discussions and figure out um, how, how we can be more responsive in this world. So speaking of the play, there's, we're, we're producing a play that's going to be the Western Hemisphere premiere. The play is called The, the Analyst and the Rabbi, and it's, it's a remarkable historical fiction about a meeting that happened between Carl Jung and a rabbi right after the Second World War. Despite being enemies, they got together, they met for two hours, and they came out of this meeting lifelong friends. So the play is about what happened in those two hours, because we all need that. We all... You know, it feels like politically we're all just at each, at each other's throats and we're trying to, uh, everybody's trying to scramble to get their, uh, their agenda met. So how is it we can come together as people who disagree and come out of it saying, yes, we both need each other, you know? And that, that's nice to say, and I agree with it, certainly. But I think also the emphasis with the confluence is upon self-understanding. What is it within you wants to be articulated, wants to come alive, wants to be expressed. So there are activities to facilitate that, to help people understand themselves more deeply and <clears throat> with regard to understanding of others. The emphasis being understanding, not judgment. I know I keep coming back to that, but I, I think the, the importance of this gathering <clears throat> is to be able to understand and appreciate and discover commonality and creative solutions without the, the superimposition of some kind of judgment. I'm right, you're wrong, I'm good, therefore you're bad if you differ from me. Let's, let's just bypass that and see if we can't come to a deeper, better understanding both of ourselves and of each other. And I think when that starts, the kind of solutions that we're reaching for or hoping for or trying to create a momentum toward becomes operational and not just theoretical. So we only have room for, for about 40 people in this gathering. And, and one of the ideas here is, is we want to create this emotional intimacy between these people to get together so that, so that there's a personal... Um, relationship with every other person involved. But we also want to make that available to the wider community. So that the wider community has, has several different uh, uh, opportunities to, to interact with us. 
And of course, a lot of this stuff is going to be live streamed. So even, even these little intimate conversations are going to be filmed and live streamed so that audience members from the rest of the world can enter in and ask questions and, and interact. And then there's, a, there's several uh, public events. The play is one where everybody's invited. And then there's a community dinner. And I really like this idea. You invite the community to this catered dinner. People, people gather at tables of, what, eight or ten? At yeah, each table. Yeah. And, and so anybody who, who's interested in these topics can come together and discuss with some of the, we'll have people from the confluence at each table to kind of be facilitators and talk about these issues. So if you have ideas for things that you think might work or things that people need to be talking about, we can, we can address it in that kind of an atmosphere. So we'll have a few community discussions like that. We'll have a lot of these live stream opportunities. We'll have the play, uh, a few other events. All of this is going to be is available. The information is available on our, our website, which is confluence22.org. We're hoping that a lot of people participate in this, even though the the core element is this is quite small, yes, selective of people getting together to talk about this stuff. A lot of very transformational work happens in small groups. So the bunch of us got together in California, what, six months ago? About that, yeah. All the presenters got together and had this fabulous weekend where we just popcorned ideas and put this, put the structure of this uh, confluence together. And it seemed to us that even if nobody showed up to this thing, we would, we would have a marvelous time. Well, now the confluence is about half, a little more than half full. So if you're really interested in participating, you can come to that website, confluence22.org, and request an invitation. Or you can live stream them at the time. I think it'll be on YouTube. Uh, all that information is on that. Will be on the website. I'm I'm especially interested in um, fairy tales. I wrote my doctoral dissertation on the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale, and Colleen and I are going to do something. I think I'm really looking forward to is we're going <clears> to <throat> meld uh, my understanding from a Jungian perspective of the symbols and the story, the narrative of the fairy tale with Colleen's approach to uh, creating a collage for individuals. And <clears throat> so we'll be, I'm excited about the opportunity to present Sleeping Beauty once again, but with the understanding that there's a depth to this fairy tale that is not often understood and that by involving everybody in their own personal exploration, growth and development can emerge, as well as a connection to all the grandmothers that told fairy tales over the hundreds and hundreds of years of, of nighttime entertainment. When the sun went down, obviously there was no TV, there was no lighting, it, you know, um, so if you weren't ready to go to sleep, fairy tales were told. So that for me is a very exciting proposition. So why is, why is that relevant to, to us today? <clears throat> because, you know, from our perspective, we live in the here and now, obviously. You know, we have the internet, we have television, but this is so new to mankind. And this, then fairy tales become a touchstone to all of our, all of our ancestors through the eons of time that we can connect with in a meaningful and demonstrable way with the, the, the articulation of the collage process. And to me, that allows for a lot of creativity and a, a lot of reflection and a lot of enjoyment upon what it is within one that wishes to be expressed and how do we understand what we are expressing. And as a professional artist, I like to think about how important creativity is for a person's blessing in the world. You know, it's, it's not just artists that, that use creativity. The, probably the most creative thing I ever did was raise three boys. Uh -huh. And, man, it was hard work and it took a lot of creative energy. And, you know, I go back to making art and say, oh, this is easy. <laughs> but, uh, but we all need some kind of creative expression. And we are built as creative creatures. We are... We are created by this this God that that made us in God's image, and to me that means we are given this power that none of the other animals have to create something new out of 
nothingness, basically. Mm -hmm. And so that's the challenge, is, is we, we have these incredibly difficult circumstances. How do we rise above that and create something that can carry us into the future? And I know, just because I'm a creative guy, it doesn't make me any better than anybody else. We need everybody's voice, it seems to me, that each of us needs to reach inside of our hearts and pull out that thing that wants to be born, which is why the central question is, what is it within you that wants to be born? And, you know, some of us have novels in us, and some of us have poems. Poems, yeah. Or, or images that we want to express. Right. Or, or music. Or businesses we want to create. And, you know, there's endless, endless ideas. But we need all that stuff. We need human beings to come alive. So I think about this one interview that Carl Jung did, where the interviewer said, how can we avoid World War III? And he said, we can do it if each individual does their work. Man, I really believe that's true, that if each of us, you know, reaches down inside and pulls out what's true, that we can and create that, a good future. And it's our hope that this effort will, is a beginning of a dialogue that will spread, that will um, enhance, not just at the time of the confluence, but as a, as a, as a genesis to thinking about each individual's contribution to a creative solution to so many issues confronting all of us collectively. So our, our idea is to make this an annual event. We wanted to do this in Helena because it's really, in some ways, I think of it as the center of the universe. You know? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> we do have this community that is able to, to use this opportunity to, to make something come alive in this fairly small town. And the next year, we hope to do it in California, the year after on the East Coast, and then the year after somewhere else. So it's an ongoing process. And there's no structure, there's no, um, there's no overarching institution, there is no religious conviction. And, you know, nobody gets to own this thing. It's just something that is coming out from bubbling up from the bottom. Kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's um, <clears throat> we've also been, uh, uh, Tim has very kindly created a, a, a statue for this occasion, for uh, the Aquarian Age, um, which we are all very interested in because from a, a zodiacal perspective, <clears throat> the Aquarian Age augurs a much different way of living collectively than the Piscean Age, which is where we are emerging from. And so Tim has kindly created a sculpture in honor of the anticipation of the change of collective consciousness that the age of Aquarius heralds or symbolizes. And to that end, I'm very grateful. Thank you, Tim. Well, thank you. It's going to be a, a wonderful journey, and we hope you can participate in some way. Again, the information is all on, on Confluence22. No, Confluence22.org. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> we work together. Yes. Bye.